Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Jorgelina. I train people to sing contemporary music from a holistic and functional approach. Today I want to talk about something different, so not specifically singing, although related, and is how to feel better through songs. If you are interested in this kind of topics, please subscribe because I am posting content like this all the time and take a look at the description below in which you can have access to some of my free products. Let's get to today's topic. Two weeks ago, I was having a terrible, terrible week. I don't like feeling bad, so I decided to do something about it. I decided to use the technique that I always use when I feel awful and is the feeling better through songs technique. I adapted it from the emotional scale. What is the emotional scale? So I got this idea of the emotional scale through a book that I read a long time ago by Esther Hicks. I'm not sure if you pronounce it like that. So basically the emotional scale is a scale in which the emotions are classified in whether they feel good or they feel bad. And the idea of that is that the emotions that make you feel bad, they have a lower frequency. And as you progress through the scale and start feeling higher vibration emotions, you start feeling better and attracting the things you want. But I use it just to feel better when I'm having a bad day. So you can Google the emotional scale, it's everywhere. And also I have a series of shorts in which I have been exploring these emotions one by one, starting from the bottom, from the lower frequency emotions uh, all the way to um, higher emotions. So you can use that and um, I'm going to link the first one in my description and then you can find your way from there. Or you can just check them in my shorts section. So for example, the lowest one is the um, vibration 20, which is shame and humiliation. We feel pretty awful when we feel like that. And then the highest, highest emotion, the top of the vortex is the emotion of 700 plus frequency. So the idea is that you start feeling better, so you, the, the emotions that start feeling better uh, start at the frequency 200, which is the emotion of hope and courage. So basically, in, if I, I'm having a day in which I'm feeling totally awful, I don't aim to feel bliss, I aim to feel hope and then I'm fine, because that's when, I, when you start feeling good. I don't think we, we must feel 100% blessed every day. It doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. My personal view on emotions, especially being a singer in which you have to empathize with the emotions, understand emotions, embody emotions. And my idea with that is that the emotions are not good or bad. The emotions are there to show you things in life, to help you take actions that you need, and they are supposed to leave your body very soon. That's why they are called emotions. The problem is when we get stuck on them. You don't want to get stuck on them but you also want to feel them. Apparently the only way to not get stuck on them is to allow yourself to feel the emotions without reacting to them and without, uh, even worse, without repressing them. Now you might be wondering, why do we get stuck in lower emotions? I'm not sure if you noticed, but actually it is kind of easier getting stuck in lower frequency emotions such as sadness than to feel happy all the time. And it's annoying because of course we don't want to feel bad, but there is a point on this and is that lower frequency emotions, the emotions that make us feel not as well and not as happy, vibrate very slow. And our brain likes to save calories. So actually getting into higher emotions takes energy, requires you to have more energy and we don't always have that available to us. So anyway, how to use the emotional scale to feel better through songs. I think this exercise is great for every singer, especially, but also for other musicians. But yeah, especially for singers. As singers, you need to develop an emotional maturity. You are communicating emotions. It's not just about having a nice voice. It's about being a communicator, a good communicator. So a very important skill for you as a singer is to be able to identify and name the emotions that you are singing about in any given song. You can't just sing a song and not even know what it feels to you. A song is not neutral, there are emotions on it. And most singers never get this. They just sing melodies without stopping and sensing and feeling. It's, seriously, it's not just about having a nice voice, it's not about reaching high notes, it really is about communication. And there is no communication if you don't know what you're singing about. You don't have to understand it intellectually, but you have to be able to empathize with it. If you're interested in learning to sing from a functional approach, that means natural and easy, join my new course, which is right now offered as a promotional price because it's just starting. So go to the description below and you can find it there. But today we are talking about how to feel better 
through songs, so let's talk about that. Step number one, you find the emotional scale. I'm not going to copy or paste it because it's not my material, but you can Google it and find it very easily. I actually have a Spotify list of every single emotion. So I have one for the, from the, the bottom of the scale, emotion frequency 20, I have a list of songs that match that frequency, humiliation and shame. And I have a playlist for every single emotional frequency. The scale has about 17 to 20 emotions that they name, so um, it's not that many. You don't have to do 300 lists or 700, it's just around 20. This is a great tool to have. Every time you have a song that you really like, you decide what frequency matches to you and you put it in the playlist. There is not really right or wrong. For example, if a song makes me feel shame, but it makes you feel anger, then you put it in the anger playlist. When you are feeling bad and you want to feel better, or when you are feeling well and you want to feel better, first identify where you are at. If I am feeling angry, that's where I start. And anger actually is quite close to hope. It's almost feeling good, believe it or not. Uh, it feels better than shame and depression and that kind of things. The lowest one is shame, also depression. They, they kind of share the same frequency, by the way. So you identify where you are at and you allow yourself to listen to the songs that have to be with that, and this is where you can dwell on it. Actually, the good thing about having bad days is that, that I get to enjoy the low frequency songs that I couldn't enjoy <laughs> any other day. So let's say that you are feeling angry, so you start in there and you listen to the songs a few times or, or, or one time, and then you are ready to move to the next step. And you might be wondering, why don't I just listen to the Bliss playlist, the highest one, and start there to feel better? No, <laughs> doesn't work like that. You probably know already that if you are having a horrible day, uh, you're depressed, for example, super low energy, and then a, a super happy and motivated person comes and tries to cheat you up, super happy, doesn't really work, does it? <laughs> Isn't this the most incredible fight you've ever had in your entire life? <laughs> so we have to start feeling better little by little. You, you can't match such a big jump. You have to go a little bit gradually. Once you are used to doing this, your body will naturally tell you. But the, the, the key here is to accept where you are, identify where you are, and to feel where you are. That's where the songs come in. That's when you allow yourself to listen to the songs that you want to hear and cry if you have to cry. Allow yourself to move those emotions, to feel them, and then you are ready to move on to the next emotion. And for some emotions, you might want to stay there a little bit longer, and that is fine. Your body's gonna tell you what you need. What happens when you are having a good day? Can you hear sad songs? Or you might also be wondering, when do you get to listen to sad songs? Well, two options. Firstly, of course, when you are having a bad day, you have the chance to match that frequency with the songs you like, enjoy them more, move on. Don't dwell too long in them though. The second time is apparently when you are feeling super happy and powerful, especially powerful, it won't affect you too much to be listening to more sad songs because you are in a different space. It's actually hard when you're feeling powerful, well, happy, present, and you are connected. Then you are protected, you feel safe. Lower emotions cannot have a big effect on you anymore. So anyway, that was the topic of the day. If you like these topics, please subscribe because I am always posting content like this.